Winning the Delano Polo Award for the round of New York was Michael Sykes in car number 44 driving for Flash Racing. The Welshman taking pole in a fan designed livery. In fact, there will be two fan designed cars on the front row because Melanie Cleveno in car number 74 also has a fan designed car. Originally, we believed there were only going to be 14 cars for this race, but the race organizers insisted that all teams participating enter three cars, therefore raising the car count from 14 to 21. And I think it's great to see that the, uh, the race organizers uh, we're thinking in the fans' interest, and uh, of course to see more uh, cars on the grid will, I think, improve the show quite dramatically. Also, in silly season news, uh, we have been informed that Davina Henton has been signed to drive for Lynx Racing in 2013. Not really a surprise there. As you can see here on the grid, there are several guys who haven't been in the series for some time. Cyrus Laterza in the third car for the Dagamo team. Paul Lyons, who hasn't made a start since 2009, believe it or not got uh, picked up to drive the third Black Diamond car. And uh, there's another guy at the back of the grid, Mariano Zavala, who is scheduled to uh, drive for Zenos and Ala competition soon, I believe. He's been running open wheelers, and he's had a very eventful weekend. Ethan Everett on the back of the grid crashed in qualifying, didn't set a time at all. Also, this race is going to be much shorter than the usual TM Master Cup Series race, which usually runs to somewhere between an hour 15 and an hour and a half. We're going to see a race that's probably going to last somewhere between 35 and 40 minutes. Effectively making this a sprint race. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Early drama for Lena Roderick and Blake Camphausen. Both these cars hit the same piece of debris on the warm-up lap and had a pit to change tires uh, while the rest of the field was coming to take the start. Now we're going to have a look at Chris Johans in the 64 car who started, who's going to start all the way back in 7th on the grid. And look at that nice start that he got around Ashby and Danny Sauvin in the 04. And Chris Johans and Tony Durbin are going to make a heroes of themselves in turn 1. But the 64 of Johans, a great start. He's gotten almost around Yamino Tenchi in the 25 car. Chris Johans in the 64 car, former Arla champion, really showing some... That was an excellent start by Chris Johans, showing his talent right there. Here's Melanie Cleveno, his teammate in the 74 car. This is a fan design paint job, an identical paint job to the car that Ethan Everett finished second with in Brazil. Ethan Everett is running this paint job as well, but Everett started last. Cleveno fighting Michael Sykes to take over the lead on the first lap, and Cleveno not giving up. Melanie Cleveno does not have a drive lined up yet for, 20, uh, for 2013. She's been doing quite a few fan tours uh, throughout the weekend, but Cleveno clears Michael Sykes coming out of the second bridge there. As you see, as Cleveno's gotten around Sykes, we're looking off the back of Cleveno's car. Oh, a little contact there between the 44 and the 74. And Sykes fighting back. He's not going to make Cleveno's life very easy. Michael Sykes, car number 44, challenging Cleveno, trying to get around, but Cleveno's going to have the advantage. Sykes goes wide, he hits the wall. Michael Sykes brushes the wall. Tony Durbin almost hit it. Uh, Tony Durbin, I think, got it within a, about an inch or two of hitting the wall, but Michael Sykes clearly hit it, and that lost him a lot of momentum, and Cleveno took the lead. Here is Danny Savin in the 04 car. He is from New York, so it's um, not unfeasible that he would be running here in the third flash racing car. Looks like it's good to see him perform in front of his home crowd in a great car. Tom Delgado was uh, believed to be in uh, contention for this ride as well, but uh, contractual obligations meant Delgado could not take this ride. Jacques Bouvier is in the 14 car, the third uh, Majestic Motorsports car. As you can see, it's going to be a little tricky to tell this car apart from the 12 car teammate Mika Pasanen, who he is racing with for 10th place. Right behind them, though, Cyrus Leterza in this 151 car. If you want to talk about a very detailed paint job, well, uh, get a look at this 151 car. This is a sort of a, a retro tribute kind of uh, livery they've got on this car. It's not a symmetrical paint job either, so this car is really kind of a work of art, almost. The, uh, car is the uh, paint job in this car is comprised of early screenshots from 8-bit Pokemon games, so it's good to see... Uh, some uh, very tasteful tributes there with that car. On board, Dale Roswell battling Marcus Leonard way back in the field. Neither of these guys have had a really good weekend so far. Roswell is going to try to make a show of it, fighting Leonard very hard. It's going wide again. Oh, Roswell hard into the wall there. Uh, that wall's been, uh, looks like it's being uh, not exactly anyone's friend early on in the race. Roswell's teammate, Peter Short, in that uh, sort of pink and black 19 car. The under construction paint job, Roswell fending him off. And their teammate for this race is Paul Lyons, who's back in the series in 13th place, driving the Buxton Powerworks livery. Uh, Lyons in this car is, uh, really, he's not had a start in the Master Cup series since 2009, when he was replaced by Ethan Everett. And uh, he's running in 13th place. He's been doing some heroics in Arla for very underfunded teams. In fact, 
he's actually scheduled to fly up to Orange County to run an Arla race over there. So uh, Lions driving for Team Burr over in Arla is really his Arla success have got, is what got him this ride in the first place. And uh, he's clearly making the most of it. And it's good to see Lions back in the series. Here is Ethan Everett, uh, as we mentioned earlier. Ethan Everett's really had a difficult weekend. He's running way back in, uh, I believe, 18th place. But uh, this is a really quick car. He just had a minor problem in qualifying. Just the slightest mistake right around in this section of the course. Sent Ethan Everett into the wall. But uh, it's really unfortunate that Everett had, uh, was stuck in the back of the field here. Here's Ryan Matthews in this uh, candy apple red car running in the back as well. Now, there's a fan vote going on between this car and the one that he ran in Brazil as to which paint job he will run for the round of British Columbia. So, uh, send in your votes. Here is Mariano Zavala in car number 47. I think it was a little too easy for him to get his master license, but uh, I think the organizers were desperate to get 21 cars instead of just 20 in, in this race. He's been spectacular so far this weekend, and uh, when I say spectacular, I mean he's been in the fence on a regular basis. So, um, Zavala's not been terribly quick, but I believe Zenos has a place for him in their Arla program and are just using this race to get him some more experience in a uh, Fender car. Kevin Dwyer is running in seventh place in this fan livery. It's a, it's a green car. It's a, rather unusual for Kevin Dwyer to see him in a green car. We usually, you know, we usually see, you know, associate the name Dwyer with a sort of royal blue car in a green car, and he's doing a very respectable job running in seventh place right now, trying to hold off Zelda Ashby. Seven laps are in the books out of 20, and here is running order on the left side. As you can see, uh, well, Melanie Clevenos led pretty much from the start in this 74 car. Danny Salvin having a pretty strong start to the race as well, and so are the two Majestic Motorsports, or two of the three Majestic Motorsports cars. Bouvier leading his two teammates. In fact, this is Bouvier's second start of the year. Here is that battle between Danny Savin and Yamino Tenchi. These two have not given up at all since the start of the race, duking it out for fourth place. Danny Savin in the Launch Lemon car getting on the uh, inside of Tenchi as they uh, come down through the straightaway, but Tenchi not giving up. Tenchi fighting back and is going to try to hold on. Savin swings it a bit wide to get a bit more momentum coming off this part of the course. Now the champ cars are here as well this weekend, and uh, this track really not suited for them because... There are some people that think the champ car race won't nearly be as exciting because, um, well, there's just not as many places for them to pass around here. As you see, Danny Salvin has cleared Yamino Tenchi. It's two yellow cars. So you see now Salvin beginning to pull away, and it looks like Tenchi was, in fact, holding up the 04 car just a little bit because Salvin really not having too many problems pulling away from her. And Danny Salvin really looking for a win in front of his home crowd. Chris Johans in this 64 car has actually kept up the pace because he's hanging on to the back of Michael Sykes and his teammate, Melanie Cleveno. And uh, really, uh, Cleveno sort of made a mockery of Johans, except for Brazil, really. On the ovals, uh, that is. Round board, uh, Mika Posinen's car, as the Cyrus Laterza in the 151 car is beginning to challenge him. And you can see we get uh, some good shots of the uh, rather complicated uh, paint job on that 151 car. It's, uh, as I said, it's not a symmetrical car. You got some blue on one side, some red on, some kind of orange red on the other side. As Laterza makes a move, oh, Posidon didn't see that one coming, but he did the very last second. Always, oh, that could have been a very, very big shunt there, giving Laterza some breathing room there. And Laterza fighting for that tenth place. He wants it bad. He hasn't been in the series for for quite some time. And there you see, is Cyrus Laterza is trying to clear Posidon. Oh, Posidon really holding on here, but Laterza is finally going to get the job done. He's having a pretty good, he's having a really good day so far in the DeGarmo Junos. Looks like that the, uh, the Juno car is uh, doing particularly well here, and all three of them in the top ten so far. Every single car on in the field except for Zelda Ashby and Cyrus Laterza hit the pit lane on lap ten. All of these slow, twisting turns here at New York are really, uh, not making fuel such a big concern. It's tire wear that is a major concern here. This is a very abrasive track surface, as you would probably expect, this being a street circuit. And Zelda Ashby in the 55, and her teammate Cyrus Leteres are rolling the dice to stay out an extra lap. Here's Leonard Roderick entering the pits in the four. He has actually caught the back end of the field, uh, so Roderick really has been flying. Here's the battle out of the pits. Melanie Cleveno and Chris Johans. Oh, contact between Chris Johans and Michael Sykes is... Johans takes second, but Cleveno retains the lead in the 74. We're going to have to see now if Zelda Ashby is able to get out in front of Melanie Cleveno. As you see, Michael Sykes just merges right into the side of Chris Johans' car. 
Johans uh, doesn't look like he's got any damage to that car. Here's Paul Lyons. Oh, contact with Pasanen and and, Johan and uh, Lyons slides the car sideways. Now, now Lyons is very far over to the left-hand side, so I think that might have been an unsafe release. And here's Leonid Roderick as he leaves the pits. And Mariano Zavala, who's way over to the right, I think, just hits Leonid Roderick there. Now, I think the uh, I think all three of these pit lane incidents should be reviewed. And, well, looks like I get my wishes today. All three of those are going to be reviewed after the race, and usually a pit lane collision means a points penalty of some kind. Cyrus Soterza and Zelda Ashby both pit on lap 11. Blake Camphausen in the 15 car has been having more mechanical difficulties. You saw him there. Michael Sykes peels off as well on uh, lap 11. Of course, he is going to attend to the damage that he sustained after hitting the side of the 64 car of Chris Johans. Interestingly enough, I believe the 12 car, Mika Pawson, yes, he is still on track. Pasanen is not pitting to fix the damage. He is uh, going to just keep what he's got. Zelda Ashby in the 55 is going to do battle now with the 12 car. Now Pasanen, Laterza is right behind this battle. In fact, Laterza is going to be right behind Lions. There he is. There's Cyrus Laterza. Now we get a rather interesting camera view here. We got one on top of a building. We're uh, having a look now at the 12 car of Pasanen as he does battle with Zelda Ashby going downhill. And we're going to try to see if we can get a good picture of them, see who wins this battle from here. And I believe Pasanen has got it. Yes, Pasanen has cleared Zelda Ashby as we get a bit of a panoramic view of the buildings here. As I mentioned earlier, Blake Kamphausen having more mechanical difficulties in the Sar Eagle. Lap 12, Ethan Everett is running all the way back in 15th place. He's not really been having great pit work. And it looks like Everett's uh, just race is not going very well at all. He's been struggling with this car. Oh, Everett's got a problem. Ethan Everett's got a problem. Huge disappointment for Ethan Everett. This was going to be a race where I thought he could definitely have capitalized, but just everything has gone wrong. And it's really not the fault of the, dr uh, fault of the driver, I think, because these just things just happen to him so often, it just seems. And uh, he's got to feel... Oh, if Everett just hit the wall, I think. Ever, Ethan Everett, the 76 car, just hit the wall. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, it, well, that was strange. Anyway, Leonid Roderick in the number four car. He's actually set two of the fastest four laps that have been running the race. Too bad he's way far down the order. Otherwise, I think he could really make things interesting at the pointy end of the field because he qualified very, very well in uh, this number four car. And it's a shame for him, and especially he's going to be, uh, well, anyway. Here's Mariano Zavala in the 47 car. I believe he's hit the wall again. So uh, Zavala not really having a uh, very good day out there. Lap 17 of 20. Melanie Cleveno has the quickest lap of the race, and that was on lap 4. As I mentioned earlier, there's she still does not have a ride lockdown for the 2013 season. And uh, nothing says, please hire me for a drive, then by dominating the race, which she is doing at the present time in this uh, 74 car for the Mitchell & Sons team that hasn't won a race in uh, since 2007. Michael Sykes is well over five laps down. In fact, I think he's six laps down. I don't think it's too far-fetched to say that the contact between Sykes and Johannes caused some suspension damage on the 44 car. Back up to the battle for fifth place between Kevin Dwyer and Danny Savin, and we're about to see how bad Savin wants fifth from Kevin Dwyer, because Savin has really been working over the 72 car for the past few laps. Whoa! Kevin Dwyer really being defensive there. Danny Savin was gonna about to come screaming in there. Two laps to go, and Zelda Ashby sitting back in eighth place in car number 55 in um, the DeGarmo car. Ashby really been having a lot of strong runs this season, and uh, she just really hasn't had the results to show. I know Ashby is in the top ten in the championship, but I think she's clearly been one of the better drivers this year and uh, probably deserved a lot better results than she's gotten, quite frankly. But uh, here is Ashby in uh, about to have a look on one of the Majestic cars. And as you see Danny Savin continuing to work over Kevin Dwyer, he's way wide in the 04 car. Just trying to get by, he said it's uh, Bouvier that, I, that um, Ashby's working around. Here's Paul Lyons and Cyrus Lateras doing battle. Oh, Lyons wide, and Lyons into the wall in the 36 car. So Lyons giving up a spot to Laterza. And now Zelda Ashby coming to take the white flag is working around the 14 car Bouvier who left the door open a bit wide. And Ashby said, well, thank you very much. I will just take this position. But Bouvier just realized his mistake, and he's trying to fight back. But Ashby's going to have the line, it looks like, and the 55 is not going to be denied here. So Zelda Ashby really taking uh, the bull by both horns, as you can quite clearly see, gets around. And now she's going to try to take on Danny Savin in the 04 car. And there she goes on the inside 
up the right side of the 04 is Savin now, who was so caught up with fighting Kevin Dwyer, just realized that Ashby's directly behind him, and now Ashby's swinging wide to try to get some more momentum to have a better run at the 04. As you can see, Ashby clearly working over Savin, and she's on the inside, coming, going to go downhill. Ashby's going to, looks like she's going to get it, but Savin fighting back for all he's worth. I don't think Savin has enough to, to hold off Ashby in the uh, 55. This is on the final lap, keep in mind, and Ashby's really just turned it up a notch in car number 55. Drag race between the two of them, uh, all the way down the, this uh, long back straightaway here as we're about to come back uphill this 90 degree right hand turn and Ashby will take the spot away from Danny Sabin. Back at the front of the field, the Michelin Suns team has not won a race since 2007 at Daytona, but today that changes as Melanie Cleveno rounds the final corner to take her first TM Master Cup Series win in dominant fashion leading all but one lap. Chris Johans, her teammate, comes home in second. Yamino Tenshi completes the podium. Tony Durbin, a quiet run fourth. Kevin Dwyer hangs on to fifth as Zelda Ashby charged through the field to get to sixth. Danny Savin taken by surprise. Jacques Bouvier, Cyrus Laterza, great job by Laterza, by the way. Mika Pasanen rounds out the top ten. His best finish since Coriola, if I'm not mistaken. Paul Lyons, great job in his return to the series. The struggles of Xenos are highlighted in this race more than anything else. Marcus Leonard led that brigade home. Zach Duff right behind him. And then their teammate Mariano Zavala hit, uh, well, quite a few things and came home 18th. Peter Short and Dale Rosso both had uh, disappointing days as well. Ryan Matthews in the 11 car. Uh, he seemed a bit underwhelming. Leonard Roderick in that four car just wasn't able to make up all that track position. And of course, Saar on reliability bit both Blake Camphausen and Ethan Everett. And suspension damage on the 44 car of Michael Sykes meant that he finished outside the top 20. However, it did mean that every single car that started the race wound up with points because Michael Sykes takes home the five bonus points for winning the poll. And now let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship leaving New York and entering the semifinal race in British Columbia. And you'll notice that Leonid Roderick, only gaining six points, did not get nearly enough to leapfrog over his title rivals. However, I think uh, he's still definitely in the hunt in uh, car number four. As you can see also, Chris Johans was able to gain quite a few points this weekend, jumping ahead of Scott Bates in the 88 car. Michael Sykes is still in the top ten in the championship. And Zelda Ashby joins the top ten in the championship by pushing Matthias Taub out. Packer Carroll sits 12th. You go from a bit further back. Marcus Leonard gained quite a few points today. Dale Roswell gained a few. And Melanie Cleveno back in the top 20 in the championship with her first Master Cup Series win. And we'll have a look now at the Independence Trophy standings, even though no Independence Trophy cars were actually running this week. The Independence Trophy can only be won by one of these three drivers, Danny Savin, Gaspar D'Souza, or Tom Moore. If Danny Savin finishes somewhere around 25th at the HLR circuit, he will take the Independence Trophy. Gaspar D'Souza needs to finish on the podium to be in a chance. And of course, if neither of them do that, then Lycoya will take the Independence Trophy with Tom Moore in the 52 car. The final round for the Independence Trophy cars will be at British Columbia, and we will also see the final appearances of the fan design paint jobs.